Glory be to the Most High God in Jesus' name. Amen. Church of the Lion God. Pastor, you should don't know. Like today, uh, what I want to talk about is just life in general and the prison system. Not to pull it down, not to big it up, but just to have a conversation. In in the Bible, one of the scriptures say to remember the prisoners as if he was in prison with them. And there's a time where Jesus is out there with the people then. And um, somebody comes to him and says, you know, master, master, boom, boom, boom. He, you know, he, he wants something. And Jesus says, oh, when I was thirsty, you didn't give me no water. When I was hungry, you didn't give me no food, you get me? And when I was in prison, you didn't want to come and see me. Do you know what I mean? So Jesus says, yeah, to remember the prisoners as if he was in prison with them. And being in jail, there's probably about, what, 90, 90,000 men women combined and the place is not do you know what I mean there's a lot of good jails out there with a lot of good staff that you know try and do the best that they can and there's a lot of jails out there that are hard and difficult and short staffed and when these jails are short staffed that contributes to whether you come out your cell or not whether you get a regime and it's difficult and there's men that are in here that are doing two, three years, and there's men that are doing life. And don't get me wrong, there's some of us that deserve to be here, and there's some people that shouldn't be here, but, you know, it's the justice system and we're here, but it's this and it. If we are of faith, and there's a lot of people out there that, that are of faith, then it's about when you're in Christ, you become a new creation. And you see the judge, yeah, the judge gave you your sentence. That was your punishment, your sentence. But when you come to prison, you're not meant to be punished while you're in here. You know what I'm saying? You're meant to be helped. So they say jail stands for four things. Protect the public. Well, you got the man them locked up and they're in their cell so that, you know, the public's protected. Rehabilitation. If there's no staff, yeah, and a short staff all the time, how can the men get rehabilitated? If certain men don't get rehabilitated and do certain things on their sentence plan, you know what? You go for parole, you're not coming out of jail because you haven't reached those objectives. You haven't did it. The next thing is um, reintegration, yeah, and maintain your family ties. A lot of men are so far away from their families, it's difficult for them to, to travel. I mean, this COVID-19 thing, unless you've got the purple apps thing, you ain't getting no visits, so that's not, yeah. So let's go back to the rehabilitation. If there's no staff, there's no teachers, or there's no this, or there's no that, no communication. You're not doing nothing, you get me? So men come in here vibrant, healthy. You know what happens? They end up like humpty, dumpty, yeah. You a couple of years in jail, and you end up a broken man. So a poem comes to mind, in it? And it's humpty, dumpty, sat on a wall. Humpty, dumpty, had a great fall. All the king's horses. And all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. You understand me? So we put our trust in the system. We put our trust in these innovations where they think, yeah, these things are going to help these men and these women to become law-abiding citizens. It's not going to help. Tick box exercises that create more frustration than they do any good. You see men coming in here men with no faith and because they're so frustrated with the system, they want to join cults, they want to join other religions. Next thing you know, they're coming out on the road and they're creating all types of atrocities because, yeah, they wasn't helped when they had the opportunity to be helped. You know, so I'm not in jail right now. I don't want to be helped. Yeah, it's good to have all that money. It's good to believe in that, that pop star lifestyle, you know got nice cars, nice clothes, what not, what not. But the reality is when you're sitting in your cell and you literally by yourself and you're just left with your thoughts, nobody really wants this. Nobody wants to be dodging bullets and nobody wants to be shooting people. You know what I mean? Like, we all want to live. We all want a second chance. That second chance can only come through Christ. In the book of Romans, chapter 5, it says this, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, where we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations work of patience, and 
patience, experience, and experience hope, and hope make us not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us to give a man hope. Yeah, for a man to have hope here yeah, in this type of situation, it's everything. The hope of coming out your cell, the hope of having a shower, the hope of having exercise, the hope of seeing one of your peers on the landing. Yeah, you need to give people hope, but. If we're not helping the men that are in here, the men and women that are in here, yeah, men like myself, what happens when you come out on the outside? There is no hope when you're going back to what you were doing before, and that's not good for anybody. So you spent the last five years, the last 10 years in jail, the last 15 years, and the government's pumping millions and millions and millions and millions into the system. Where's the money being spent? It's ridiculous. So we try faith in it because we want hope in it. We want something greater and we want something better. But with scripture, it's not a physical thing, it's spiritual. And we know that we're dealing with wickedness in high places. And it's cruel the way some men are dealt with in here. I see a lot of celebrities on the TV talking about mental health. What do you know about mental health? Yeah, you're getting paid six, seven figures. What do you know about mental health really and truly? Yeah, but the men that are in here and the women that are in these type of places, you know, where we What's happening with their mental health? A lot of people self-harming, a lot of people trying to kill themselves and that because they can't take it in here. But each cell is worth 30, 40 grand. It's not, where is the money being spent? And the reality is this, these men and these women that are mentally getting help, people like myself, when we do come out of jail, you're coming out with more prison problems than, than what you had before you come into prison with. Your family, relationships are broken down because your people them don't want to wait because they've moved on, you know? That's what happens. It's a choice. You do the crime, you got to do the time. That's how it goes. But people are be, being paid money to help young men and old men in these places. And, and, and it's just nuts, on it? And here what happens when the people that are not being held, they come back out on it. So they're either coming out as addicts or they're coming out as shutters or they're coming out as robbers because they're trying to get back what they've lost. And what happens... Yeah, you see, your next door neighbour, yeah, or your house, or you, you get burgled, your car gets robbed, the shop, the shop gets robbed, because these men have been sitting down for years, these women have been sitting down for years, and they come out, and they need help. And why do they need help? Because they've been locked down for the past how many years, with no help and no support. It's nuts. It's crazy. But we put our trust in God in it. We do our best to put our trust and faith in God in it. Yeah, and there is a lot of good people who work in here. But there's also some people that shouldn't be working in here. The tight are straight. Do you know what I mean? See so men get treated worse than dogs and that. And you wouldn't want to treat your kids and how people get treated like this. So it's this and it. Like, we gotta do better. Do you know what I mean? Like, adults we gotta do better in it. The madam that are in here, we gotta do better in it. And those that want the help, yeah, that that are looking for help and they're looking for support and that. You know, Boris Johnson, give the man them that support in it. Do you know what I mean? Like, put more staff in the prison on it. So the man can come out, they can, they, they can get vocations, they can get qualifications, they, they, you know, they can become writers, pastors, um, ministers, you know, mechanics, um, industrial cleaners, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Invest the money into your prisons. So the women and men that are locked down 24-7 or 23 hours a day can get the help that they need in it. And there needs to be communication between different departments, whether it's psychology, whether it's um, the drug counsellors, whether it's the workshops, whether it's education, there needs to be some level of communication so the man them can receive the help that they need in it. But yeah, that was just a thought, hey, if things don't change, then it will only result in madness happening when people get released because they've, they've, they've been sat down for years and they're not getting the help that they need. Their census was their punishment. And while they're in here, while we're in here, yeah, we're not here to be punished. We're not here to be ridiculed. We're not here to be, um, you know, just having a mick taken out of us, yeah. We're here to do time. But while we're doing the time, make it be purposeful time, in it. But like I said, there is some good staff out there and there are some good governors, in it. But yeah, more needs to be done, yeah. But I keep reading this Bible. We're going to keep beating this Bible. We're going to keep doing these audios. We're going to keep trying to build a message, send out the message. And even if it's one heart that we change, yeah, then we're doing what, what we need to be doing. You know what I mean? Like the Holy Ghost.
Ghost is given unto us. But when we were yet without strength in due time, yeah, Christ died for the ungodly. Yeah, that's us, you get me, the lawless or a righteous man who one day, yeah, pre-adventure for a good man. Some would even dare to die, but God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Did Christ die for nothing? He didn't, and he died for every single one of us to enable us here to have life, to do better. That's every single one of us. So you might think you don't have faith, but if you're out there and you're working, you know, God said, boom, you can either serve him or you can serve money in it. So if you're out there, you're working, yeah, you know, you're working for a price and you might be selling your time, you might be selling a product, you know, whatever it is you're working in it. And that's God's work, and it? Are you trying to provide for your family? But the reality is this, and it? We need to be in faith. Do you know what I mean? There's different vocations, different type of um, educational systems out there. But if the foundation is not on Scripture and it's not on the Bible, then the thing that we're searching for, that void in your heart, is never, ever, ever going to be filled. And we all need to be on the same page, and that same page is with Christ. Anything that's got nothing to do with Jesus, I'm not interested in that. Not interested in that. You know what I'm saying? This is you know, this is England and it Angels land. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's it's time for Christianity to be rebirthed, you know, to be back up there. We need to be doing more for Christians, isn't it? But yeah, glory be to God in Jesus' name. Pastor Ishid Dunno. Peace, love and blessings. Pray for my brothers and sisters that are incarcerated. Pray for my brothers and sisters that are inquiring about Christ and pray for my brothers and sisters that come in here every day, the chapel team and those staff members that are in Christ and pray for the visitors and, you know, the workers and the people and that keep this machine going, that they can open up their hearts to be more Christ-like and maybe the bad women that are in the cells will be treated 